Welcome back. This is week four of your Spartan training. If you're coming back, thank you for returning and I hope you're getting something out of this. And if this is the first time you're seeing my glorious face, I have a whole eight week training program that I'm doing that I use to get um, podium ready for Spartan racing that I'm kind of sharing to help people meet their resolutions of doing their first Spartan race, whether it's your New Year's resolution or otherwise. So that's a long way of saying, please go to the start with week zero and um, see what this is all about and if it's for you. And for the rest of you, if you are coming back, how are you feeling? Please let me know in the comments. Are you actually getting something out of this? At this week, you're almost a month in, you should definitely feel more in shape. You should feel like you have more endurance. You should be more confident running and especially you should be faster in almost everything you're doing. But yeah, you should be pretty confident right now. You should be putting effort into increasing your mile time. And we're gonna do this by increasing the intensity of the sprints. So this week is gonna be a deviation of last week's base workout. But there's actually a couple changes, one major that I wanna review with you right now. The major change is I went ahead and I moved a couple days around. I want the running workouts, the cardio workouts to be staggered as such. Day one, long run. Day two, sprint, sprint workout, interval workout, something designed to increase your speed. Day three, cardio, back to a distance slash recovery run. Day four, sprint interval. Day five, we're just gonna keep with the bucket. Day um, six, I want you to do the four by four on a treadmill. Guys, though, so I want you just to be thinking every other day you're gonna be doing some kind of sprint workout because that's what's gonna make you faster. So let's review the changes, shall we? Day one. Day one is the chest workout. At the beginning of the workout, do three sets of 15 pull-ups. If you're having a hard time with the pull-ups, one thing you can do is focus on the negative. So jump up, use the momentum of your jump to bring you to the top of the bar, and slowly over the course of eight seconds, lower your body down. So count one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, as you slowly let your body down. It will help get you to the point that you're doing pull-ups if you can't already do them. Cardio to a four mile run, and that's just gonna be at 80%. So it's a hard run, but it's not a full out sprint. It'll be challenging, um, but you shouldn't be completely dead and you shouldn't be sprinting for four miles, but you should really be pushing yourself. Day two, this is a day that's gonna be all cardio, dedicate it to increasing your speed. So what I want you to do, be so day two, we're still gonna do the four by 400s, and we're gonna do them at three miles total distance for the, the four by 400s, but we're gonna add some distance on either side of that. So I want you to add a two mile warm up before you do the intervals and a two mile cool down after you do the intervals. So one thing you could do is park two miles away from the track, run to the track, do your interval workout, and run back to your car. And again, if you're a new person looking to train for your Spartan race, and this term 400 by 400 isn't familiar to you, please go review my other videos. Day three, um, pretty much the same. Day three is different because at the end of the workout, we're gonna do an active rest run. So active rest run. So I want you to do three miles, easy run, nice and casual. You're basically letting your body recover. A little more than a jog. It's just to keep your body moving, keep that distance under your feet, and to like work out some of the kinks. Now day four, we're going back into our sprint workout, but we're not gonna do the four by 400. I'm switching it to an 800 by 800 for two miles total. So it's essentially two 800 meter sprints with a 800 meter jog in between. You want to maintain the same sprint that you would for the 400 for this 800, or day two, whatever day you start this. I want you to sandwich the sprints with a two mile run before and a two mile run after. This same day that you're doing the 800 meter sprints, add in 10 200 meter sprints. So what you're gonna do is sprint 200 meters as hard and as fast as you possibly can sprint, then walk 200 meters and repeat 10 times. Yeah, this is a full out sprint, hard as you can. Faster than you're doing the 400s and 800s by far. You shouldn't be able to sustain your speed past 200 meters. 
day five, bucket carry. So I staggered the bucket carry to day five um, because you're gonna go in that a little wore out and that's fine because the bucket carry isn't a sprint activity, it isn't sprint training, it's endurance training. Considering you just killed yourself doing your first 800 meter sprint workout, we're gonna go ahead and give you a little bit of recovery. So with the bucket carry, ditch the 400 meter sprint part and replace that with a slow 400 meter jog. The big difference to day six now, this week, is that at the beginning of the workup, you're gonna do three sets of 15 pull-ups. And again, pull-ups by whatever means necessary. So again, if you're having trouble with your pull-ups, get up by whatever means necessary and focus on the negative drop. And then at the end of the workout, we're gonna do the four by 400, but do it on the treadmill. Push the speed gradually on the sprints beyond your comfort zone. I want you to start feeling what it's like for your legs to turn over quicker. I start at my, I start the 400 on the sprint at let's say like my desired race pace. And then every 10 seconds, I'll bump it up by two. And I'll just keep doing that until um, I can't handle it anymore essentially. This has been a hard week. We've really increased our interval training. So what I want you to go ahead and do is do the sandbag carry. And then after that, just focus on stretching, relaxing your body, massage, do whatever you need to do to recover so you can hit the next week hard. The one thing that you can do to kind of test yourself and prep yourself and prepare yourself for an actual race-like condition is go find a CrossFit gym in your local area and go in and do a drop out workout, drop out, drop, do a drop-in workout on the day that they're doing an AMRAP, as many reps as you can in a certain time frame. These workouts are based on endurance and conditioning, not so much sheer brute strength. So if you can get in on one of those workouts, you are, um, it'll be a, it will provide a chance for you to test the gains. It'll, it'll, it'll give you a chance to demonstrate how beneficial this is and test yourself. It'll also, give you a chance to kind of have like a pseudo competition, which I think is good. Perfect way to get like your adrenaline going and start to feel like how you're gonna kind of feel in a race. race. So after this, I'm gonna record a video on uh, grip strength. So I'm gonna just list five exercises that I do to increase my uh, grip strength. And uh, I think that will also be beneficial to you. So as always, if this is helpful, please subscribe, come back, and we can do it again next week. Um, if you have any questions, leave comments. I'm always available to ask. ask. I've started like a new personal challenge. I'm on day five of doing 100 pull-ups a day. Not 500 pull-ups at once, but just... I'm on day five of doing 100 pull-ups a day. Not 100 pull-ups in one sitting, but 100 pull-ups throughout the day. And um, I'm like already like feeling like more confident in my upper body strength. And I'm doing this for a specific reason, which I can't share now for a couple reasons. Um, the first and foremost is I don't want to jinx myself, but as soon as I can, it's going to be freaking awesome. And I can't wait to share it on this channel. And like, I'm going to make a video of the progress of like what doing 100 pull-ups a day does for you over the course of 30 days.